I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. As classes resumed this week in Flagler County, John Arking reports there were some notable differences from when school was last in session. Less than half of the Flagler School District's normal 13,000 student body returned to classes this week, with many opting to go online, many others simply not showing up. Jason Wheeler is the Community Information Specialist for Flagler Schools. We were, of course, down a little bit in our numbers because of parents choosing to opt for our remote live or our iFlagger virtual options. We had about 61% of our student population was actually registered for in-person classes. Face coverings are required for all of our students in grades 3 through 12, and we strongly encourage them for our students in second grade through pre-K below. And most of the kids, i got to say, even in the younger age groups, they were wearing face coverings, which was very good that the messaging did get out to our families for the importance of doing that for us. Wheeler says they're asking parents to keep their kids enrolled for at least the next two weeks in whichever of the three options they picked over the summer. Uh, we've got our staffing on our campuses just so that every, every lane is fully supported. So if we start having kids opt in for live, you know, face-to-face, as opposed to the remote live, then we've got to shift teachers and such. And that's just a logistical nightmare these first couple of weeks. Meanwhile, a letter went out to parents and staffers in the Matanzas High School community after a staff member tested positive for COVID-19, joining about a dozen or so others who have tested positive in the last few months, most of them in the past six weeks. Wheeler says in all of those cases, the health department will do follow-up contact tracing and order quarantining as needed. From the WNCF Newsroom, I'm John Arkin. Students will have to wear masks to school to protect each other. What might that be like? Flagler County School Superintendent Kathy Middlestadt said that school leadership has been working with staffs to start a new routine. It's a new routine of life for all of us. She said that life lessons are just as important as those taught from a book are taught. In education, you know, we find ourselves more often than not, not always teaching the context of the book and the lecture, but also about character development and being civil to each other and taking care of each other. To listen to the interview with Superintendent Kathy Middlestadt and Jacob Oliva, download the Flagler Radio app and then go to the Free For All Friday podcast. Tomorrow, Jacob Oliva talks about the statewide interaction on the decision to return to school. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. Palm Coast Mayor Melissa Holland wants to continue virtual town halls even after the COVID-19 pandemic is behind us. I like having a monthly topic that each department can introduce as a way to continuously get that information out there. She highlighted the county streetlight program as a worthy example of a future town hall, saying people deserve information even if they can't attend regular council meetings. To have that department being able to engage the public to give them the exact location, how we came to the determination of which lights, where, why. I would not know that unless I'm sitting in these meetings every Tuesday. So to the point of we don't know what we don't know, I work under the assumption that our residents are working from a place unless they have the information handed to them or delivered to them. They're not coming to council meetings. However, that information is really critical to them. The virtual town halls happen every Wednesday. Here today's live at noon right here on WNZF or through the Palm Coast Connect app. She's only a rookie with Flagler County government, and she's already getting an award. Karen Johnson has the story. Flagler County risk manager Samantha Whitfield is now the recipient of the 2020 Preferred Safety and Risk Management Member of the Year Award given by the Board of Commissioners. Samantha humbly shares how she stood out among her peers. I just really took bits and pieces from a lot of other counties and just created a a model program here that a lot of people in the state are pretty happy with. Samantha has accomplished quite a lot in one year. County Administrator Jerry Cameron cheers Samantha for changing the safety and risk management culture in Flagler County and thanked commissioners for seeing the need for a risk manager, a new position with Samantha's hire. Samantha is pleased to be making a difference. People know that, you know, I'm here to help. I'm here to get them quicker care when they're injured. I'm here to, you know, ensure that we're keeping our employees as safe as possible. They also know they can come in here. If they see an unsafe practice, they can come let me know. Samantha is also a 20-year Air Force veteran. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.